By the end of this video, you'll know how to professionally apply grain to your CGI. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons for making this channel possible. If you're curious about all of the perks that we offer, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Hello everyone, now recently on the community discord, which by the way you can join down below, we were talking about CGI and grain and how to actually apply grain to your CGI so it looks as realistic as possible. So today I thought I'd walk you through my method in order to do that. I do use a very industry standard method and so these are some of the same things that people are using in Hollywood. So I thought I'd walk through uh, my workflow today. Anyways, on the screen you can see uh, this shot. This shot was actually uh, shot on a film camera and so if you want to check out the film where this is from i greatly appreciate it make sure you tell jacob sent you uh, so check that out in the description down below but anyway you can see it is a ton of grain it might be a little bit hard to tell on youtube because of the compression but how do we take this grain and actually apply it to our cgi so that's what we're going to be talking about today okay so let's go ahead and jump into it as you can see we have a super simple node tree set up over here all you need to know is that this is my cgi and then this is the footage and we're basically just combining one over top of the other with this merge and so super simple scene this is uh, very common if you're adding some CGI into a shot but uh, as you can see we have our footage up here and it has a lot of noise into it so my method I'm actually going to go ahead and denoise this plate and we're going to go ahead and use the denoise footage for our compositing instead and so what we need to do is we need to go ahead and use uh, the reduce noise program by neat video that will be in the description below it is a paid program however I cannot stress this enough it is one of the most amazing programs for denoising footage it is used by a lot of artists throughout the industry so it is worth every penny in my opinion but anyway we can go ahead and uh, import that in so reduce noise plug the source into the clip and we can go ahead and prepare the noise profile now this program is super simple uh, we do want to go ahead and select progressive it depends on your footage but most of the time it's going to be progressive and as you can see we have a lot of information here we have the default footage up here and then as we scroll we can see all of this information down here think of these as just like a uh, little mass that help you add identify what areas uh, are good areas to select for our noise anyway uh, what we're basically looking for are just areas that don't have a lot of detail into them and so perfect example we always kind of want to work, look for something like this where there is a sky a kind of a blank sky that's kind of like the best case scenario so uh, up here is a perfect example Example. if that wasn't in the shot I could select like this area over here doesn't have a lot of detail and then also like in the barn doesn't have a lot of detail and so those are ways we can uh, try to get that out now if you click and drag it'll do a little block box uh, once it's green that's a good kind of area to uh, select uh, basically the larger it is the more uh, information it's going to give the program to actually go ahead and denoise now down here we see not uniform in the Y these are just little like pop-ups that uh, you know tell you that this might not be that great for a of a selection of actually denoising again this is an area that has a lot of detail especially in the bar and in the leaves all that stuff so that's why it's giving that me that little error we can go ahead and move this up to the sky again no detail at all up here so i know this is a good area and as you can see the program also thinks so because there is no little wording down here uh, so we can go ahead and build the profile it'll pop up a quality over here now quality uh, as long as it's above 70 percent, i think that's pretty pretty good uh, you can try to select different areas if you want to move this box around but 80 is really good in this scene so anyway you can see all of this uh, now i'm not going to touch any of this stuff this is really for more advanced users to actually fine tune the grain selection and all this stuff but really what we can do is just go ahead and apply and we can go ahead and view that note it is basically removing all the grain and yes it is doing moving grain if i go ahead and play this you can still see a little bit here and there uh, but it's doing really really nice uh, job to get out all that grain right there so you can on and off and just see the difference right there so anyway we have this uh, now this is a very intensive node so what i usually like to do is go ahead and write it out so i'm going to hit w to add a write node and so usually what i'll do is i'll come up here and uh, set the file type to mob apple Press uh, quad 4 is usually fine and then make sure you just set the output transform to be the same as your footage and so as you can see with all of those settings uh, set up we now uh, can render that out and here is the rendered footage you can see i basically just have an mov file right here so again we do that because it bakes in this information because this is a super heavy node and so we don't want this to crash the software as much as it does so as you can see let's go ahead and flip uh, back and forth just make sure everything is the exact same uh, versus just you know removing the grain you also want to make sure and just on and off it to the original node and as you can see uh, it is the exact same so that is good uh, you do want to make sure that you have both of them are 
the same format. So as I go back and forth between them down here, uh, they are both UHD 4K, so that's really good. And also, uh, just another little double check I like to do is click uh, into both of those, go to the dope sheet up here, and make sure the start frame and the end frame are roughly around the same. So that is looking good here. If you don't have that, it might uh, you might run into some artifacts and issues later on uh, as we go into the degraining process. Okay, so anyway, we have that done. We can go ahead. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this over here uh, so we can compare the before and after. So there we go. We have this down, and we can see over here we have the original uh, footage in the uh, comp still. And then down here we also have the uh, CGI. Now the CGI, uh, very important, is denoised. And so what we actually want to do is in the composite, we're going to replace the original footage. So that's this right here. We don't need this anymore, so I'll delete that. We want to replace that with the denoise footage. So basically, think about this. Uh, if we are in the composite, if I come down here, uh, you can see both the CGI and the footage are now denoised. And so in the compositing process, that's going to give us a lot of stuff, especially if you're doing any, uh, you know, color keying. So like chroma keying, uh, if you're doing tracking, uh, all that information, grain is actually going to affect that stuff. So that's why I did like doing this uh, process, because now if, you know, for instance, I needed to uh, add a tracker node and actually 2D track uh, something, we're not going to have grain in the way of actually 2D tracking. And so that's why I love this method so much. We'll go ahead and uh, delete that. Uh, let's come back out here. Now we have uh, this little footage down here. Don't delete that yet because we do need that for the next process. And that is going to be to actually regrain everything after all of the compositing is finished. And so as you can see, we have the denoise footage. And, uh, you know, we can't turn this back over to a client because, say, the client actually likes the uh, grain and wants to keep it natural looking. And so our job is to go ahead and apply the grain back in. What we're going to be using today for that is the DAS grain uh, plugin. And so do go ahead and download that down below. So I'm going to drag this into the uh, frame. You can see we have all four of these little pipettes. Uh, we can go ahead and drag that into the pipeline. It uh, went ahead and uh, automatically selected the comp, but we also have the plate, the mask, and then the uh, degrain plate over here as well. Now, the plate is the original uh, undenoised footage, and so that is this right here, the noisy footage. And then down here, I'll go ahead and make a little uh, thing over here uh, and plug the degrain plate into there. I just find it organizes things a little bit better. And then, uh, of course, the degrain plate is going to be the denoised footage that we have up here. So there you go. Quick tip, I also like to Alt-H to hide the little thing. Uh, just makes the uh, setup a little bit cleaner. And if you do need it, you can always uh, highlight it again to see where it's actually plugged into. Uh, anyway, the final thing, we're not going to be using the mask today. The mask is if you're doing another process to where you're actually going to use the mask of the CGI. Uh, that's usually when you are using the footage up here to composite and everything like that. But in my opinion, I like this uh, workflow just because it makes everything so clean in the compositing space. Anyways, if we go back to Dazgrain, what we want to do now is we want to make sure, uh, first of all, the metadata is correct. Now, usually the metadata should be the exact same from the comp to the plate, but uh, usually just a good rule of thumb is to go ahead and select the plate. Uh, next down here, you can mess around with all these settings. Honestly, uh, if you're not, you know, doing anything too complicated, if you're not changing any color uh, aspects inside of Nuke, you just want to leave all of this the same. Uh, next, we can go down and click analyze and it'll add a, actually analyze everything. You can see it's going through all the different channels, everything like that. So there you go. I'll go ahead and play this to show that it is moving grain and everything is looking good. But as you can see, the grain perfectly matches. Uh, if I kind of back and forth between the original, you can see the exact same pattern is there too like if you see this little like pattern right there you kind of on and off it it'll be the exact same now i do want to bring that up because that is very nice sometimes but sometimes you might have some issues if there is a specific pattern you know such as this tree sometimes on top of your cgi you actually have that pattern uh, exist over top of the cgi and it can be very noticeable and so in order to actually get that out they have an amazing feature called the replace section up here and then we can uh, do some scattering and so what this does we can go ahead and activate that. Uh, it'll bring this little box down here. Of course, this box is the exact same thing as before. We want to select an area where there's not a lot of detail, so I'm just going to place it in the sky up here. And what it's doing is it's actually uh, using all of this uh, information in the box and actually applying that to the rest of the footage. You can actually see the cell pattern if you click this button. You can actually see the uh, kind of math and stuff it's doing. It's basically taking the noise around here and then projecting it on all of these different cells uh, so that all of the noise is 
is non-uniform and it doesn't like uh, create any uh, overlapping patterns or any tiling or anything like that so a very very cool tool now fortunately for this shot we did not need it at all i didn't notice any patterns or anything like that and honestly most of the time you want to keep the grain as much as uh to the uh thing as possible in case the director comes back and is like hey the grain looks a little bit weird say they're doing something for color and uh you know you don't want to uh, have the grain like mismatch that much if you can avoid it. So as we can see, we have a lot of good grain and stuff like that. And that is pretty much the entire process. Now we would go here and add our final right node, you know, do all of the preparation to actually turn it over to wherever we're, uh, you know, whatever we're doing next. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the grain perfectly matches on this end. We'll uh, do a before and after. So here is before you can see the, there is no grain at all. It looks very fake. But then if I come back over here, it looks like the uh, cube is now actually in the shot. This is it again a very very important uh thing for us visual effects artists adding all of the uh lens elements and stuff back into the frame just so it makes it as realistic as possible okay so i think that's going to do it for us today again we do have a patreon and discord down below i'd love to chat with you guys and so definitely join us on one of those two but anyways thanks so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video